Another week, boys, and another twab. This week at Bungie, a collision course was set. With the launch of Season of the Worthy, Guardians are heading into the wild to discover lost set of bunkers and power up Rasputin's defenses to take on this new threat. Here's a quick look at some of what you can expect during the new season of Destiny. Before we embark on the first twab of the new season, we'd like to acknowledge some feedback that we've been seeing in the wild. We had a large change to emblems and stat trackers, which we'll be talking about later in the TWAB. We're also seeing some discussion on the new weapons of the season and lack of ritual weapons for Vanguard, Crucible, and Gambit. The team is currently reviewing and discussing the feedback and we'll be looking to talk about our goals for weapons in a future TWAB. There are a variety of other topics from Eververse to Armor Mods, which we're collecting feedback on and discussing internally as a team. While we don't have any specific changes to announce at this time, we want to make sure you know that we see the feedback and are actively discussing this internally. Once we have more information, we'll be sure to let you know. It's been a wild launch week, but we're just getting started. Tomorrow's Friday, and the day isn't just reserved for Zer anymore. Trials returns, and we've got a bit to talk about to get you prepared. All right, good. So we're actually going to talk about rituals. That was a big topic yesterday for us. Normally, when a season starts, we rush to Shax, to Zavala, to Drifter. We want to see what exactly the new ritual or pinnacle weapons are. That was not the case here with Season of the Worthy. I wish there was more discussion on that in this TWAB. Hopefully, we'll hear something in the future, though. Now, moving on. Trials Returns. In case you still haven't heard, Trials of Osiris returns this season. The first weekend of action-packed, high-stakes PvP starts tomorrow. Let's set the mood, shall we? For everyone not familiar with Trials of Osiris, here's a quick rundown of what to expect. The game mode is 3v3 elimination using the same rules showcased in the last few seasons. The key difference is that Saint-14 will be calling the matches and now your power matters. You must be 960 power to participate. Your trials passage or card is your ticket in. Try to get as many wins as possible before you hit three losses and have to start over. Earn a flawless victory by winning seven matches with no losses. You can reset your trials passage at any time by accessing the item in your quest or on the Trials of Osiris activity mode. One change from previous Trials of Osiris is that there are no boons that you will need to purchase and apply. Instead, there will be five different trial passages you can choose from that offer different bonuses built in like forgiving one loss per run or granting bonus experience from wins that increase with the number of wins on a ticket. Oh, thank God. So we do have mercy. Players will also be able to earn trials tokens to turn into Saint-14 to increase their reputation and earn trial ingrams. Any tokens that a player doesn't spend that week will be removed when trials ends at the next weekly reset. So spend them if you got them. We have more details on these features and how Trials of Osiris will work in our full Trials of Osiris help article. I actually just clicked it and it brought me to the Trials of Osiris video, the, the trailer. I don't know if that's the right link. Bungie continues though, Trials of Osiris will match you with opponents based on your connections and how many wins you have logged on your current passage. To submit yourself to these trials, you must form your own fire team. Now go and shine bright as beacons of light. All right. That is trials, fellas. We got boons. That was a big one. The last thing, the last thing we need is a debt weapons. Maybe they might say something. Now, moving on. In preparation for trials of Osiris, our security team has been hard at work protecting the integrity of the Crucible. We're always working to improve our defenses against cheats and other malicious activity. Recently, we've improved our methods for combating those who feel like they don't have to play by the rules. We will be keeping a close eye on Trials of Osiris, where the stakes are even higher. Now, server-side security features have been deployed specifically for Trials of Osiris, and we harden our network layer to make it more resilient to network manipulation. We've also increased our staffing to be able to handle the review and banning of cheaters. Because the ongoing battle with cheating is fought primarily with information, we can't go into exact details on our methods, which might tip off would-be cheaters on ways to get around them. We can assure you, we take cheating seriously and will continue to work to both prevent it and punish any offenders. If you do come across anyone you suspect of cheating, Please report them in game as well as online with our suspected cheater report form. Eyes up. Okay, that's great. I'm glad that they're going to be improving the banning process. I will say one of the best ways to just tell if someone's cheating or not is just looking at their previous history. If that guy is in trials and he has like a 100 KD, that's a dead giveaway. Hands down, dead giveaway. He's cheating. At the same time, if you see a guy with like a .05 KD, but he somehow wins every single game, that's another red flag. So there's two sides to the spectrum. And I feel like... There should be something in like Bungie's API that just kind of like shouts these red flags. Like, yo, these guys and their stats are kind of bonkers. This doesn't make sense. Maybe that's the way they're doing it. Yo, I just completely busted Bungie's whole process. No, 
Moving up, tracker tracking. In season of the worthy, all emblems have been converted to use our new stat trackers. That means all emblems will be inspectable and can have trackers equipped or not. When designing the system, our overall goal is to provide players more ways and options to show off their accomplishments. Our first selection of stats were determined by prioritizing stats that represented a skill that could be improved week over week or season over season and be an accomplishment that players would want to display that was meaningful to other players. Because of that, some stats that couldn't be completed or improved any longer weren't included. We believed in these requirements in principle, but strictly applying them retroactively unfairly removed your ability to show off accomplishments that you could flaunt in seasons prior. It was a change made with good intentions, but was the wrong way to roll out a new system. We've identified some stats that can be added back in a future patch and wanted to share them with you. We are currently planning to add these stat trackers back in an update later in the season. So seasons, so things like season eight, pass rank earn, season nine, pass rank earn, and fractally donated, the account ones. Oh, wow, that's a big one. I didn't even know they left that one off. Pretty much kills as all of these different subclasses, which looks like all of them. Crucible, lifetime, gold medals earned, longest glory win streak, and total valor resets. That'll be added in a future patch. And destinations, pits of heresy, solo flawless completions. Now, I don't know how many other ones are actually left off. I haven't even explored emblems and the trackers. Hell, half the time I forget to even put on titles. Now, Bungie continues, this list isn't complete yet, and we plan to add it before the update is released. As a note, none of the stats that were previously tracked have been lost. We're still storing them. Some stats would take a bit more work to return to the fold, and we love to see player feedback to help us prioritize which you'd like to see return in the future. Feel free to sound off on the Bungie.net forums, DTG, subreddit, or even Twitter. We've got eyes everywhere. All right, boys, whatever stat tracker is not present for you that you want in the game, just yell, shout it out. Now, moving on, Mercy Baku. Am I saying that right? This past week, several players from the French community showed the kindness and generosity of Guardians by putting on a charity event. Here's our community manager, Epion, with a quick recap of the event. Damn it, you'd think I would know how to say his name. What? What? Who is this? Let me look him up on Twitter. Oh, I know this guy. I still don't know how to say his name. Forgive me, man. I'm sorry. Epion says, this past weekend was a special time for the French community, and I wanted to thank all the amazing people involved in the Unity Streams charity event and the whole French community. French content creators put on 72-hour live stream marathon, and their goal was to help Camille, a daughter of one of the members of our community who contracted leukemia a few years ago. She's on her way to recovering, but the French community wanted to help her smile again. To say that they achieved their goal would be an understatement. During these 72 hours of live streaming, more than 6,000 viewers watched some of their favorite guardians take up challenges set up by themselves or the community. Those viewers also donated a total of 10,724 euros. It was pretty amazing to see all these people gathered and do such great things. I'm blessed to be part of this community. Thank you to Line and Yoda from Zombie Factory, Scallop, Seaman, what the hell? <laughs> this is a really heartfelt message. And God dog it, man, I can't pronounce anyone's name. That's probably not Seaman, but that's the only thing I could think of when I saw that. I'm just going to leave it at that, man. The rest of these guardians, much love to all of you guys. By the way, huge shout out to Camille. Camille, way to be a champion and beat back leukemia. That's a hell of a guardian, fellas. Now, moving on. We have some player support info for those that don't know what the hell is going on. Main quests and characters. Players have been asking how they can acquire these seasonal quests on their alternate characters. Only one character can unlock the EDZ bunker. But once they complete the Rising Our Defenses quest by purchasing an EDZ Bunker upgrade, all characters can acquire the Seraph Warsat Network quest from Rasputin. That's right, baby. We've come a long way. We used to have to do all this stuff on each and every one of our accounts. Now, it's account-wide. Now, Destination Port Update. We've updated the port forwarding section of our Network Troubleshooting Guide. PC players experiencing beaver and mongoose hairs, empty seraph towers, or an inability to join fire teams may need to update their UDP destination ports. I've been getting a lot of errors. I don't know which one they are. I just know I'm getting kicked. Also, website code of conduct update. The player support community and Bungie.net teams have been working closely together to update our website code of conduct policy to help foster a friendlier and more welcoming environment. Along with the update, we've created an explanation article that provides a more thorough definition of each rule. Look, here's the thing, man. I don't think anybody's ever going to be friendly on a forum. It wouldn't be a forum if that was the case. But yeah, we got some new rules. Keep it together, fellas. Known issues. While we continue to investigate various known issues, Here's a list of all the latest issues that were reported to us in the help forum. Swapping energy on a fully masterwork and modded armor piece 
will incorrectly show that it can no longer be upgraded. If this occurs, please exit and re-enter the detail screen. That's a hell of a troubleshoot. Nobody tried that. Literally just exit and re-enter. The planetary material collection bunker upgrade is not awarding the correct number of planetary resources. For the EDZ Seraph bunker upgrade tier one, requires completing challenges from Zavala, Shax, and Drifter, Banshee 44, or Hawthorne. Interacting with the statue of Sir Edo, kill that name, man, in the Shadow Throne may cause crashes, all right? Faction rally ornaments cannot be applied to the respective class items. We're also investigating crash issues occurring in Gambit for players on PS4 and Steam. The Ward of Dawn ability for Coda the Protector of Void Titans is not generating three orbs of light on activation. Also, the Virtuous Greaves Titan ornament lost its glow effect. Those are the known issues, guys. Outside of that, that's it, fellas. That is your TWAB. Trial starts tomorrow, and I just want you guys to know, no matter what happens, adept weapons are no adept weapons. Cheaters are no cheaters. Potatoes are no potatoes. I love you all. Slap that like button like your mama told you right.